Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. My colleague Keith Campbell recently visited Airbus Military in Spain as a guest of the company. He joins me now to report some of what he learned there. Hi Keith. Can you briefly outline any new developments announced by the company? Well, the main new development they announced was a new version of the highly successful C295 uh, light, medium transport and multi-purpose aircraft. The new version they call the C295W, W because it's fitted with winglets, which extend upwards from the wingtips of the aircraft. And in addition to adding the winglets, they have also uh, worked with the engine manufacturer, Pratt & Whitney, uh, to upgrade the engines used on the aircraft and to bring in new engine settings. Now, what this means is that uh, the winglets increase aerodynamic efficiency of the aircraft, uh, which, among other things, reduces fuel expenditure, uh, which isn't so important on military aircraft, but the side effect of this is to slightly increase the range, which is important for military aircraft. The upgrading of the engines significantly improves the aircraft's performance in terms of uh, climb, uh, maximum altitude, and cruise, especially when it's operating from uh, high-level airfields or in hot conditions, what's called hot and high in the industry. Um, Thus, uh, C295W that takes off from an airfield that's an, uh, at an altitude of 1,800 meters and flies some 900 kilometers will be able to carry a full ton more payload than a standard C295 would be able to carry in the same profile. So it, it brings uh, significant advantages. And if you aren't operating from hot and high uh, conditions, well, operating from sea level, the combination of winglets and upgraded engines gives you longer range and greater endurance, which is especially important for the surveillance versions of the C-295. You can get a maritime surveillance version of the aircraft, you, uh, which is unarmed, or you can get an armed maritime patrol version. And they have a prototype for an airborne early warning version as well. Is this of significance for South Africa? Well, it could be. Uh, South Africa has a need to replace uh, its C-47 turboprop uh, aircraft that it uses for light, medium transport and for maritime surveillance. These aircraft, some of these aircraft, are about uh, 70 years old, and the design itself is 80 years old. Uh, they badly need replacement. Two have been lost in accidents in the past six or so months, one of which was a tragic fatal accident which 11, 11 personnel lost their lives. So it would, uh, the C295 is one of the possible options to replace the C47, and Airbus Military have confirmed that they are in preliminary talks with South Africa about this aircraft, and the C295W version would give improved performance to South Africa, uh, both in the maritime surveillance role, and of course, uh, Johannesburg, Pretoria are pretty hot and pretty high, especially in summer, so there would be a benefit there too. What is the latest news regarding the A400M program? Well, the A400M, of course, has got very strong South African connections. Uh, South African companies are significant uh, suppliers to the A400M. Uh, Donnell Aerostructures, part of the state-owned Donnell Group, supplies the wing fuselage fairing and what are called the fuselage top shells, which uh, are placed on top of the fuselage before and behind the wing center box of the aircraft. And private sector company Aerosuit provides a lot of the interior fittings, the cargo linings, the cockpit linings, and also the wingtips, among other uh, elements. So there's a significant South African input in this. And of course, the big news uh, is that Airbus expects to hand over the first production A400M to its lead customer, the French Air Force, in a matter of a few weeks. The delivery process is now underway. 
There's a whole series of delivery tests, flight tests and other tests that have to be uh, uh, done before the French Air Force will uh, take possession of the aircraft. And there's an awful lot of paperwork that has to be signed off. But this process is underway and it'll be followed by the delivery of a second aircraft to the French Air Force, then the first aircraft to the Turkish Air Force, and then before the end of the year, the third aircraft to the French Air Force. And the final assembly line at uh, Seville in Spain is now beginning to fill up with aircraft under assembly. So the long years of development, test, frustration, uh, delays, finally, finally are coming to an end and the aircraft is now beginning to come off the production line for the customers. The early aircraft are in what's called initial operating capability standard. Uh, then uh, by the end of the year, the fourth aircraft should be to what a stand they call SOC1, which is greater capabilities. And then next year, they should be moved up to standard SOC1.5, even greater capabilities. These standards refer not to the physical aircraft, but to the software. Uh, in many modern aircraft projects, multi-aircraft projects, the big thing is not actually the airframe or the engines, it's the software. And uh, you have, it's now common for software to be released in batches on a new aircraft design, starting with initial operating capability and then increasing the operational envelope of the aircraft as further releases come along. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.